Uh, hi there, my name's Melvin, and today I'm going to be showing you a method of skin replacement as a means to skin retouching. Um, before I go any further, I know that my audio is coming from only my left speaker, and I, I don't know why, but I know about it. Um, uh, okay, uh, here we go. Sometimes you, you'll get a person with skin so bad because of acne, or perhaps it's a woman who's been wearing way too much makeup. But you'll have all these little imperfections here that it just won't do any good for you to um, go in there with the healing brush or the clone stab tool um, because it's, it's, just, it's, it's just too much. And the patch tool is just too finicky in these sort of things. So what do you do is you replace the entire section and I'll show you how First you want to duplicate your background layer, which is imperative when you're working destructively with an actual pixel layer. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Now normally I sharpen at the end, but for, for these purposes I think it's going to look a lot better for you guys. And um, it'll really increase the effect of, of the technique I'm using if I do it beforehand, so I'm gonna. Um, but for now, I'll show you wh what the unsharp mask does. The threshold slider looks for contrast, and if it sees anything below a certain point, it does not sharpen it, which is which is really good, because if I tried to sharpen these, pa these patches of skin, uh, the smooth ones, it would just make it look really dry, and that would look bad. Okay, the radius slider what that does is it controls the amount of, of, of haloing. So the higher the radius, the more haloing, and that looks really crappy too. Okay, so take it easy. And um, the amount slider, what, what that will do is, is it, it increases the amount of general sharpening that occurs. And the more you do that, the more the chances of, of the skin looking really dry. And that's not good, so take it easy. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the, uh, the, the the brush tool, the healing brush tool, to remove some of the more noticeable blemishes just because it'll make it easy for me in the long run. Uh, just nothing too big, and then on to the main course. Okay. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to filter, and I'm going to go to noise and dust and scratches. And how this works is like a reverse unsharp mask in the way that the threshold looks for contrast and then anything above that it obliterates. Um, and what you're going to want to use this for is is you see all these blemishes here, these little pimples. You want to remove those because I, I want to remove them but have the texture of the skin below it to be pretty unchanged. So just mess with these sliders until you get that kind of result. And it looks like that's what I got, so I like it. Okay. So obviously I don't want it in the whole thing. So I'm going to use what's called a layer mask. And I'm going um, right down here and the bottom of the layers palette, the third from the left, is a little rectangle with a circle in it. And that's the... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's the, the layer mask button and if I hold alter option while I'm pressing it it will lay down a black layer mask which will hide everything now if you go to your white uh, paint brush and you start painting in that'll reveal um, the areas that you want the the filter to affect so go ahead and do that now as you can see here it's it it's pretty much doing a big chunk of the work for me we're, we're pretty much halfway there, but it's still a little too blotchy for what I'd like. So I'm going to do two more steps, and those steps are I'm going to um, I'm going to use Gaussian Blur to just nuke his skin, and then I'm going to add some grain and just tone it all back down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to duplicate my layer. Um, again, and because I've duplicated the layer mask, oh, I won't have to repaint in the effects that I do on this other one. 
And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to say texture grain and I'm going to apply some grain. My image is fairly large, so I'm going to use grain type enlarged with high intensity and mid contrast. Um, be, because well, you want it to be pr pretty intense, but not not too poppy. Um, as you can see here. Uh, it's it's arbitrary depending on the size of your image, but you want some good grain there. Okay, that looks really bad, but it's okay because we're not done. So what you're going to do is directly after, and it has to be directly after because otherwise it won't work. You go up to edit and you say fade grain. And what's important is you go to the co color blending mode and you say luminosity because that will get rid of all the color noise. And, <laughs> and then it would just leave the texture. So um, I'm going to fade the opacity down to 14%, which is which is what I figured out works best for me. It gets it down low enough that I can start to play with it, um, but still high enough that I have some room to play. And then I'm going to press OK. OK, so now next thing of what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to need to... Um, um, put Gaussian blur on. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I missed something! I'm so sorry! Okay. <laughs> okay, go back here. And we're gonna apply a Gaussian blur before the grain. So you go to blur, and you go Gaussian blur, and you just want to nuke his skin all to hell! And it looks like I've done that. So I'm going to press OK. OK. Now I'm going to do everything that I just did with the grain. So pretend like I did it all in a row. In the right row. And there I've done it and it's OK. So, um, fair grain, luminosity, 14%. I like it. Oh, that's 15, it'll do. Okay, now, pay attention here. What I need to do is I need to... Mm, mm, I need to um, lower the opacity of this and fade it back down so that the texture of the skin will show through. Because, you see, I don't want it to look completely synthetic, you see. And you might say, why did he go through the trouble of doing the dust and scratches there if he was just going to nuke the skin and bring it down? And the reason for that is because you see all, the, all these pimples and stuff that we got rid of first. We, uh, we got rid of them because I don't want to see them in the final output. I just want to see this smoother skin looking texture. So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to reveal the grain layer and I'm going to lower the opacity down just to the point where I can still see the grain, but but I can see the skin kind of showing through the, the texture because I want it to look a little natural. And what the grain does is it simulates pores and and because um, you don't want your eye to say, wow, that looks way too smooth and it doesn't make sense and I can't handle it. If it simulates the pores, it will have no problem and you're fine. And, and we're basically done here with my skin replacing technique. Um, and what I'm going to do to finish is I'm going to add a couple of adjustment layers. One for the luminosity and the other one to uh, balance out the color a little bit. And so now, my friend John, um, I've made him from a fairly textured young man to a fairly presentable one. Um, I hope you liked my tutorial. Bye now.